In July 1969, the New South Wales sheep town of Parks was about to play its role in one of humankind's greatest achievements. Okay, we can verify the position of the uh, opening I ought to have on the camera. It was a very quiet sort of a town. It takes you up to 30 years to become one of the locals. And we're getting a picture on the TV. The Parks Telescope would receive live pictures of the Apollo 11 moon landing, mesmerising 600 million Earthlings, or one-fifth of humanity. Okay. We got a good picture, huh? We can make out a fair amount of detail. One of the telescope operators at the dish back then was Ben Lamb. So Ben, do you reckon you'd still drive it today? I can still drive it today. 50 years on? Oh yes, no trouble. <laughs> the only trouble is of course, now it's all computers. It was just a normal day's work and everything was normal. Just another day? It's just another day, but once it actually happened, it was a different story then. John Bolton was the boss of the telescope. Why has Parks been chosen to uh, uh, relay the first television pictures of Man on the Moon? Because at the time they step out of the spacecraft, the moon will only be in the view of radio telescopes and tracking antennas in this hemisphere. The signals from the spacecraft will be extremely weak. So unprecedented was a mission like this that nothing could be certain. We have a number of 100 to 1 chances and a number of 1,000 to 1 chances. All these have been backed up. In fact, a team of men were on standby to manually rotate the telescope by hand if needed. They had uh, cranks which they would turn around the gearboxes. By hand? And, and by hand. And another man had a stopwatch and he would time them and tell them to go faster or slower. Perhaps our biggest weakness is the weather. If we get a very severe storm and very high winds, then we'd no longer be able to keep tracking. Inside the dish was radio receiver engineer David Cook. We were waiting for the uh, spacecraft to appear over our horizon. The telescope was tipped down as far as it could go. And uh, the wind, which had been uh, quite strong, suddenly gusted up to over 100 kilometres an hour. We thought we, we had taken precautions of thought of everything that could have gone wrong, except the weather. And that's what did go wrong. <laughs> the world more or less will depend on this station for these first pictures. Does it worry you a great deal? No, I don't think so. Uh... I think there are other people who've got much tougher jobs than we have. But the wind suddenly abated. And finally, at 12.56 Eastern Standard Time, the Parkes Telescope received the moment that would define the 20th century. The eagle has landed. Roger, twink. Tranquility, we copy you on the ground. You got a bunch of guys about to turn blue. We're breathing again. Thanks a lot. I was in the control room where the uh, team of Americans were operating the electronics. I was there uh, to monitor the output of the receiver, make sure that uh, nothing went wrong. I know one of the Americans over there looked at it and he said, well, how about that? It's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. It wasn't a thing which you could make up. It doesn't matter how many people think about it, how they still reckon it was a fake. There's no way it could have been a fake, not as far as we're concerned. Parks not only relayed TV pictures over those five days in 1969, but also, crucially, in-flight data like the astronauts' heart rates, oxygen levels and more. There seems to be no difficulty in moving around. Right, do we copy? Pretty good little jump. 
Australians maybe didn't fully grasp the science. Well, I asked them what all the little wiggly green lines were and got answers which I wouldn't pretend thoroughly to understand. I think perhaps I felt when I was in there was that I was blinded by science. But they certainly grasped what it meant for our country. Australia is proud to be playing a part in this adventure through its tracking stations, through the park's radio telescope and through other facilities. The year 2000 film The Dish immortalised our role in history and perhaps perpetuated a myth. There was no animosity between us and the Americans whatsoever. And cricket? And no, no cricket. Cricket in The Dish, it's one of the bloody ridiculous things I've ever heard. It was highly illegal because, look, we were only, we had to walk in special area in The Dish. We just couldn't barge straight through The Dish there, you know. So and, that and never happened? No. It was a day at work for some, but a day to remember for a generation. I had two children that went to school that day, and like most other school children in Australia, they sat around watching this TV screen. And the little one, age five, she ran over to her mother and said, oh, mummy, she said, there's a man on the moon. <laughs> no, I'd, I had not told her what I was going to be doing that day. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 7.30's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.